Hello everybody, my name is Heather Griffin. My classmates, Anna Grimes, Ebony Nunley, Rebecca Odin, and myself are nursing students at Sneed State Community College, and we have put together a PowerPoint to teach you about hypertension. First, I want to start off with the pathophysiology of hypertension. What is hypertension? Hypertension is when there is an increase in the blood pressure greater than 140 over 90 in adults younger than 60 years old and 150 over 90 in those who are older than 60 years of age. So with that being said, you want adults younger than 60 to have a blood pressure less than 140 over 90 and those who are older than 60 to have a blood pressure less than 150 over 90. How are those numbers determined? Well, blood pressure is determined by the force of blood against the arterial walls. The top number of a blood pressure reading is known as the systolic pressure, which measures the amount of pressure in your arteries when the heart beats, and the bottom number represents the diastolic pressure, which measures the amount of pressure when your heart rests between beats. This slide has two illustrations of what hypertension does to our body. The picture on the left illustrates how hypertension can affect the heart and arteries. When hypertension is not treated, it can lead to atherosclerosis and congestive heart failure. And the picture on the right illustrates what a normal artery looks like that progresses to hypertension. Hypertension can be categorized by two types, essential hypertension and secondary hypertension. Essential hypertension is more common of the two and is the most commonly seen health problem in the healthcare setting. Essential hypertension is not caused by an existing health problem. Instead, it is caused by unmodifiable risk factors like genetics, and modifiable risk factors such as smoking, excessive continuous stress, physical inactivity, and obesity are just a few. Secondary hypertension, on the other hand, is caused by specific disease processes and certain medications. Kidney disease, brain tumors, pregnancy, and medications including oral contraceptives, glucocorticoids, and others are some of the risk factors for secondary hypertension. Treating the disease process or ceasing the medication or switching medications that does not affect blood pressure will treat secondary hypertension. This chart is from the American Heart Association. According to the American Heart Association, there are five blood pressure categories ranging from normal to hypertensive crisis. Normal blood pressure is considered as a systolic pressure of less than 120 mmHg and a diastolic of less than 80 mmHg. The higher the category, the more the systolic and diastolic pressure increases. As a practicing internist and cardiologist, one of the most common problems I see patients for is hypertension. Hypertension, also known as high blood pressure, is defined based on numbers. When you report a blood pressure, there's two number, numbers given. The first number is the pressure of blood when your heart is contracting. The second number, which is lower, is the pressure of the blood inside your blood vessels when the heart is relaxing. Hypertension is, is a disease that we call a silent killer because you really may not have any symptoms associated with hypertension. That's why it's so important to get your blood pressure checked at least once a year, which is a recommendation for all adults older than 18 years of age. If you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure, there's various steps you can take. First and foremost, all patients with high blood pressure should make some important lifestyle changes. This includes things like watching what you eat, especially avoiding salty foods, frequent diet and exercise, and maintaining a healthy weight. If lifestyle changes are not enough to bring your blood pressure back down to a normal range, your doctor may start you on medications. There's lots of different medications with lots of different side effect profiles, so hopefully your doctor can find one that works for you. Want to learn more about high blood pressure? Download the KHealth app.
There you can learn about how people like you were diagnosed and treated. You can also chat with one of our board certified physicians who can give you recommendations on some of the lifestyle changes you can make and some of the medications that might help you treat your high blood pressure. Signs and symptoms of hypertension. Hypertension is known as the silent killer because it can be asymptomatic, which means it presents with no symptoms. If the patient is not asymptomatic and shows signs and symptoms of hypertension, these might include flushing of the face, meaning they'll have a reddened face, dizziness, dyspnea, which is difficulty breathing or shortness of breath, either on exertion or at rest. They could also have episodes of syncope or commonly referred to as fainting, fatigue or tiredness, sweating, and trouble sleeping. Now on to treatment for hypertension. Hypertension has several types of drug therapies. Some in particular are diuretics, beta blockers, and ACE inhibitors. There are two types of diuretic therapy, potassium wasting and potassium sparing. With diuretic therapy, it is important to monitor potassium levels because you do not want potassium to be too high or too low. First, we will talk about potassium wasting, which are commonly known as loop diuretics. These medications are furosemide and hydrochlorothiazide. While taking these medications, it is encouraged to include potassium rich foods in the diet, such as pork and potatoes, oranges, tomatoes, avocados, spinach and strawberries, fish, mushrooms, and melons to include carrots, bananas, and raisins because these medications excrete potassium. The potassium sparing medication is spironolactone the person on this type of diuretic needs to decrease or limit foods high in potassium, and that includes salt substitutes because they are high in potassium as well. Hypertension drug therapy, beta blockers. Beta blockers are used to reduce blood pressure. This classification of medicine end in LOL, such as propranolol and atenolol. One thing to note with this medication is to check your heart rate and systolic blood pressure before administering. If your heart rate is below 60 or your systolic pressure is 90 to 100 mmHg, do not administer this medication. These medications can also cause wheezing as well as resulting in orthostatic hypotension and masking signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. To get an accurate reading, it's important to take your blood pressure correctly. One of the most important factors in taking accurate blood pressure is having a proper fitting cuff. Once you have the right cuff size, find a quiet environment and rest for 15 minutes. Sit in a chair with your feet flat on the floor and your back straight. Rest your arm on the table with your palm facing upward. The cuff should be level with your heart. Do not talk or move while taking a measurement. Avoid food, alcohol, exercise, smoking, and bathing for 30 minutes prior to taking a measurement. Your blood pressure can naturally fluctuate throughout the day. So taking it at the same time each day will give you more accurate comparisons. For tips on making changes to your lifestyle to lower your blood pressure, visit AmranHealthCare.com. Hypertension teaching. Teaching patients to keep up with a diary to log their blood pressure in is important because it allows the doctor to see how well their blood pressure is being managed at home, either with lifestyle changes or with medications their healthcare provider prescribed.
Hypertensive crisis teaching. What is hypertensive crisis? Hypertensive crisis occurs when the blood pressure is significantly increased with a systolic pressure of 180 and a diastolic pressure of 120 or has exceeded that 180 over 120. It is very important to teach about hypertensive crisis because it can lead to damage of blood vessels and potentially a stroke. According to Mayo Clinic, there are two classifications of hypertensive crisis, urgent, which does not harm any vital organs, and emergent, which does damage to vital organs. If any of these signs and symptoms, such as blurred vision, chest pain, epistaxis, commonly known as nosebleed, extremely high blood pressure, or severe headache occur, to seek immediate medical attention. Hypertension teaching DASH. DASH, also known as dietary approaches to stop hypertension, teaches a heart healthy eating plan for hypertension. According to the Mayo Clinic, this heart healthy eating needs to include foods that are rich in calcium, fiber, potassium, and magnesium. Some of these food choices are avocados, chicken, cabbage, and broccoli. Although there are many more food options, these are just a few. Foods that are high in sodium and saturated fats increase blood pressure, so limiting or even eliminating sodium and saturated fats should be in the diet. Sticking to the DASH diet can reduce blood pressure in as little as two weeks and can also help manage cholesterol levels. In this next section, we will cover ways to prevent hypertension. One way to prevent hypertension is getting a blood pressure screening. According to Healthy People 2020, the prevalence of hypertension, both primary and secondary in children, and adolescents in the United States ranges from 3% to 4% in most studies. So screening for hypertension for adolescents and children beginning at age three is beneficial. Hypertension prevention. Access to healthcare services is an important part of preventing hypertension. Without healthcare insurance, it is often more difficult to make doctor appointments or even pick up prescriptions for hypertension. In Marshall County, there is an abundant amount of people who are 65 and older with a disability or who do not even have health insurance. Smoking cessation, as well as being more physically active, can aid in preventing hypertension. Smoking causes a temporary increase in blood pressure, so quitting smoking can lead to a decrease in blood pressure and can also reduce the risk for heart attack and stroke. So avoiding all tobacco products, including secondhand smoke, is recommended. Engaging in aerobic physical activity three to four times a week at least 30 to 40 minutes per session can help maintain a healthy weight as well as lowering your blood pressure. Some of these activities that can have a positive effect in decreasing blood pressure are walking, hiking, fitness or dance classes, bicycling, swimming, flexibility and stretching exercises, and muscle strengthening. A small amount of weight loss can prevent high blood pressure or even manage it. Preventing hypertension, heart healthy diet. Having a heart healthy diet has a major role in preventing hypertension. According to Healthy People 2020, Having access to foods that supports healthy dietary patterns contributes to an individual's overall health 
throughout life. Limiting sodium to no more than 2,400 milligrams per day, which is the amount of a teaspoon of salt. Limiting the intake of sugar-sweetened beverages, sweets, and red meats can help reduce blood pressure. When choosing a dietary pattern, consume foods that include fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, whole grains, poultry, fish, legumes, non-tropical vegetable oils and nuts, and low-fat or fat-free dairy products. Also, drinking alcohol needs to be limited to one a day for women and two a day for men. Studies have shown that in Marshall County alone, 15.7% of people are living in poverty compared to the 10.5% national average. Research shows that low-income families rely on food that is cheap and convenient to access, but have little nutritional density. Foods like fresh fruit and vegetables are oftentimes more expensive. This slide is our reference slide. Thank you for watching and listening to our PowerPoint on hypertension. We hope you have learned about hypertension and can apply this knowledge to you and others who may be at risk for hypertension or have hypertension already.